Memory is the only lasting possession we have. I have made my life the subject of my work, using the images of home, the places I have visited, and the stars I have looked up to. I just want a reminder that I didn't imagine my experiences, says Zarina. Born into a traditional Muslim family in Aligarh, India in 1937, Zarina received a Bachelor of Science degree in Mathematics from Aligarh Muslim University in 1958 and only later trained in printmaking techniques in Bangkok, Paris, and Tokyo. This university degree, alongside visits to Sultanate and Mughal architectural monuments and gardens in Agra, Fatehpur Sikri, and New Delhi, instilled in Zarina an early love of geometry, refinement, and pattern. Her father, Sheikh Abdur Rashid, was a bibliophile and a professor of medieval Indian history at Aligarh Muslim University. He had a private library in the Aligarh house, where Zarina and her siblings were permitted to play from time to time. His garden was informed by his worldly outlook, with seeds imported from abroad, and a rare surviving photograph of the house shows us a large lawn surrounded by roses, as well as fruit and medic medicinal trees. Zarina and her siblings lived primarily with their mother, Fahmita Begum, in the Zanana, or women's quarters. and played outside in their mother's garden, designed and planted in a more traditional manner with marigold, bougainvillea, as well as aromatic white flowers. Indeed, the fragrance of these flowers is still very dear to Zarina, and she recalls that many of the flowers came from the jasmine family, like chameli and mokra. Her favorite until today, as was her mother's, is Ratki Rani, or Queen of the Night, known to attract snakes with its beautiful scent. Zarina even talks about the sound of the blossoms opening. Zarina married diplomat Saad Hashmi in 1958 and left India to embark on a peripatetic life which would encompass cities as diverse as Bangkok, New Delhi, Paris, Bonn, Tokyo, Los Angeles, Santa Cruz, and New York. Her earliest woodblock print, titled Hawker, and this is the actual um, woodblock itself, made out of balsa wood, which she made in Bangkok, introduces us to her work. Zarina initially learned woodcut printing from a Thai professor at Shilpakorn University. Rather than drawing, Zarina was immediately drawn to carving and continued to always carve her own woodblocks. In 1963, Saad and Zarina moved to Paris, where she immediately introduced herself to renowned British printmaker and painter Stanley William Hayter. Hayter had founded the legendary printmaking studio Atelier 17 in 1927, frequented by artists such as Picasso, Giacometti, Miro, and several other stalwarts of 20th century art. Um, and along with Zarina's work, I thought it'd be interesting to include some examples of, you know, people who were either her mentors or her peers, um, who she still cites as lifelong influences. Um, you know, no artist works in any kind of artistic or intellectual silo, uh, and especially not somebody like Zarina. Um, I think as curators, we sometimes falsely include her work along other artists who were working with minimalism in India, such as Nasreen Mohammadi. But in fact, her work has nothing to do with Mohammadi's work. It had a completely different, um, a different kind of departure, which comes more from the traditions of printmaking. And uh, Stanley William Hayter was her mentor in Paris. And um, this early initiation that she had at Atelier 17 was really formative to her work. Zarina says, at Atelier 17, I learned etching and viscosity printing, but most importantly, I discovered abstraction. 
I credit Hater for this completely. He pushed me to go beyond the figurative. This is where I met Krishna Reddy. Um, so the photograph on the upper left shows Krishna Reddy sitting with Hater in a cafe in Paris in the 50s. And the image to the right is an early, um, very important um, intaglio print by Krishna Reddy from 1968, which we know was one of the most important years in, 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 20th, in the 20th century. And uh, Krishna Reddy was very um, involved with um, all of the protests that were happening um, with the student movement in Paris in the, in the late 60s. Zarina continues, my life fell apart in Paris. Saad and I were living separate lives. I drew maps and traveled through France, often on my own. I read Jean-Paul Sartre, Simone de Beauvoir, Natalie Sorat, Alain Rob Grier. I met the most fascinating people, André Malraux, de Beauvoir, Beckett, and Umberto Eco. I saw all the art I could, Nam Gebo, Antoine Pevsner, Malevich, Brancusi, Max Ernst, and Maria Helena Vera da Silva. I discovered Paris through art. In 1968, Saad and Zarina relocated to New Delhi, at which point she moved into a little studio of her own where she continued to live and work. This was a defining moment in her life and practice as she was coming into being as an artist in her own right. Zarina started working with found wood from the road making relief prints through direct rubbings on the paper's surface. This is a very early example called Door from 1969, and it's a relief print from collaged wood. These compositions deal with motifs that recur throughout the artist's oeuvre, such as the concept of home, architecture and a notion of place, the jali or trellised screen, as well as geometry, abstraction, and repetition. They are also visceral and evocative works that openly communicate the artist's love of paper, as well as her intuitive understanding of the sculptural qualities of wood. In fact, although Zarina has been celebrated as a printmaker, she is equally a sculptor, exploring every facet of her chosen medium. And I thought it would be interesting for you to see some installation views um, of the retrospective that was organized at the Hammer in Los Angeles in 2012. It then traveled to the Guggenheim, uh, and I had organized it for the museum in 2013, and then subsequently to the Art Institute of Chicago. And um, the first room includes the early woodblock for Hawker, which you can see here. And then some of these very, very early relief prints. Um, and it was a way of really introducing people um, to her interest in abstraction and geometry. And not something, this isn't something that she discovered in the 90s. Um, but for people who were less familiar with her early work, um, you know, from 68, 69, 70, um, it introduced her kind of core interests and concepts right at the start of the exhibition. Um, you know, this is a lovely one inspired by Brancusi's Kiss, her own kind of abstracted version of it. This is a view from Chicago. Just gives you a, a sense of the scale of the works as well. The work has always been very intimate. <clears throat> Whilst in India, the artist visited local paper making centers outside Delhi, as well as in Rajasthan to learn about the qualities of Indian handmade paper. Um, and if you notice, um, if we just go back, I'd like you just to notice um, the captions for all of the work. Um, I wanted to give you 
very, very precise information because Zarina throughout the last 50 years has been